This week on Maker Update, adding nuance to your LED projects, Teensy 4.0, machine learning for knitting, Hello Drinkbot, AI wearables, and toy hacking. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all doing great. I had a lot of fun this past weekend at my local Maker Fair showing off my electric go-karts. I can't encourage you guys enough to go out and showcase your projects at your local fair. They're always looking for new stuff to keep things fresh, so give it a shot. I'm really glad I did. Now let's get started with the project of the week. Here in the Bay Area, we have a ton of incredible makers. One of them is Micah Scott, also known as Scanlime. She recently published a tutorial on Instructables for making this LED triangle made of smaller triangles. It's a project that involves laser cutting out a frame and the acrylic triangles that diffuse the light. Inside the frame are a handful of NeoPixel strips wired together so that power and data wires run out the back to whatever project board you want to use to drive them. Now, we've seen a lot of pretty LED projects on this show. A few things make this one particularly great. First, Micah goes into some useful detail on how the design creates just the right amount of space for diffusing the LED glow. The only way to get this kind of even glow from just a few LEDs is to get really smart about how you diffuse them. The second detail here is that by limiting the number of LEDs used, you can run the entire project just off of USB power. But the best part of this guide is that it's an invitation to learn how to use a Fade Candy LED controller. The Fade Candy board, developed by Micah and sold by Adafruit and DigiKey, gives you the ability to get more nuanced colors and fades out of common NeoPixel LED strip than you could from Arduino style boards. Of course, you don't have to use a Fade Candy board, but if like me, you've been dying to give it a try, this looks like a great project to get started with. I'll include a link to the older GitHub page for this project, which includes the code and a few more options for the design. It's time for some news. The popular Arduino compatible Teensy development board has a new version out. Version 4.0 returns to a smaller size and uses a 600 megahertz ARM Cortex M7 processor making it one of the fastest microcontroller boards available. It also has a ton of other little extras like a random number generator, cryptographic acceleration, CAN bus support. It's crazy, and it sells for $20. MIT News has a post and video up talking about new research they're doing on using machine learning to recreate and optimize knitted or woven clothing, which in a certain sense is all clothing. Really, there's sort of two main parts to this announcement. The first is a machine learning automation software called InverseKnit, which takes 2D images of something like a glove and then sets an AI model loose on reinterpreting it as a set of instructions that it can send to a knitting machine. Testing found that it could produce accurate results 94% of the time. The second part of the announcement is the development of a tool called CADNIT, which allows casual users to customize digital templates for knitted designs. Taken together, it sounds like a promising foundation for a new branch of approachable digital fabrication that you can wear, something that could quickly revolutionize clothing and the industries around it. Now for more projects. I'm embarrassed to admit that in my focus to create a cocktail robot last month, I completely missed out on the Hello Drinkbot project by Rich Gibson. In what he's calling the Hello World of Cocktail Robotics, Rich has created an incredible online resource for making this Raspberry Pi controlled drink bot. You can find files for two types of laser cut enclosures and the software that's forked from the Party Robotics Bartendro project. With this software, you get a web-based interface that you can customize for different drink recipes, modifying the pump times for each ingredient. It looks like a solid base to build on and I'm excited to play for it for next year's robot. I also love this project from Stephanie Codes. It's this necklace of LED tiles that turns on when another person is detected in the room and changes animations as more people are added. A custom ring on her finger has a button that reverses the script so that the tiles switch on only when the room is empty and also allows some direct control over the brightness of the lights. What I didn't realize at first is that the human detecting aspect of this project is handled separately by TensorFlow machine learning software running on a Raspberry Pi computer that she's also wearing. Her choker is actually the Pi camera module that's looking out for people in the room. Not just motion, but people based on an AI model that's working with. The necklace and the lights run separately on an Adafruit Metro Mini interface with the Raspberry Pi so that it can read how many people are identified in the room and trigger LED animations based on that. It's crazy. 
Now for a few tips and tools. On Thingiverse, there's a collection of 3D printable travel accessories, including a toothpaste tube coupler for refilling those little toothpaste tubes. On YouTube, Thomas Sandlatterer has an informative video that looks at the latest Raspberry Pi 4. He talks openly about its drawbacks, but also some of its awesome benchmarks and its suitability as an Octoprint server for your 3D printer. He's using his for running a 4K quality wall-mounted digital dashboard system. On Instructables, Colleen Graves has a great teacher-friendly guide on taking apart old electronic or mechanical toys with kids or students and hacking them into new creations. I love toy hacking, so this one really spoke to me. This week, I got approved to show off some of my projects at the East Bay Mini Maker Fair in Oakland, California on Sunday, October 27th. The esteemed maker, Mr. Mike Warren, Microsource on Instructables, will be joining me and we'll have a table of our projects to show off. And coming off my Maker Faire experience last weekend, I have to say that the most valuable tool I brought with me were my tub of towels. I reviewed these a while back on the Cool Tools channel. They're just like extra large, extra tough hand wipes. They're a godsend when you're stuck in the booth, fixing up a messy project, shaking random hands, cleaning off your table, wiping away food truck grease, or dealing with a less than ideal bathroom situation. I'm now a convert and I recommend having something like this handy if you're ever exhibiting a project. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, let's take a look at the SparkFun line of Soundy boards. These are audio playback boards available through DigiKey that you can integrate into your projects. For around $15, there's the Little Soundy, which plays back audio stored on the internal four megabytes of built-in flash storage. It works with Wave or AUG files, uses 3.3 volt logic and power. You load up files over the USB connection and they play back over the line output when the pins are triggered. Now, if your files are numbered zero through five, the number pins on the board will trigger playback of the matching file. For more features, there's the Papa Soundy for around $27. This one includes a built-in Arduino and plays up to 32 files that you can store using the micro SD card slot. Either one of these boards would be a great fit for any upcoming Halloween project. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email list to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week with a few bonus projects thrown in there. A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.